Welcome students. Now in this video we are going to learn the standard 10th science 2 chapter number 3 life process in living organisms part 2. This is the third video. Myself is Kavita Koberne from HL High School going to present it. Student, in the previous video, we have learned the sexual reproduction in plants, male reproductive system, female reproductive system, male is produce the sperm and female is producing the ovum and the fertilization of that we saw in this. Now we are going to see the next different scientific technologies used for the fertilization process. If natural process does not occur in the human being, then. To produce a baby, the ovum and the sperm is required over there. But if there is a problem or there is an irregularity in the menstrual cycle of a woman, then the ovum will not be produced regularly. They will not be implanted at the proper place at proper time. The oocyte production, if it is not regular, then the difficulty will come in the fertilization of ovum and sperm over there. Now it is not only the ladies, the gents also. The in male, if the sperms are absent in the semen. Second thing, if the sperms, they are slow in the movement or if there is an abnormality in the sperm, then this fertilization process will not take place. So no embryo will be formed and no development of the embryo will there and no baby formation will be there. So many of the couples, they are facing these type of problems and because of that they don't have the children so if they want the children there are some scientific technologies developed by the scientists so that they can have the children we will see the first technology we want to see is the IVF technology in the IVF technology this is done when there is a problem in the uh, path of oviduct and Second one is if the sperm count is less, then this technology is used. So what happens in this in this technology that the embryo is brought up in the test tube and then it is implanted in the uh, uterus of a woman. Here you can see there the ovum is there. In that ovum the sperm is injected and here then the uh, zyco embryo formation will take place over there. Now when this embryo will be formed then this zygote will be implanted in the uterus of the so this em embryo will be implanted in the uterus of a woman and there the growth of the child will take place. One more technology we have for just having the children. That technology we can call it as a surrogacy. Now this surrogacy is used for those couple in which the woman is not able to implant the embryo in the uterus. So at that time the embryo uh, for uh, formation of the embryo the sperm from the men and the women they are collected outside the body. They are just uh, fertilized the embryo will be formed and this embryo will be implanted to a woman which is having a healthy uterus over there. But there are some rules and regulation. Everyone can't use all this technique over there. If there is a problem with this couple or this parents, then only they can use it. Here the lady who is chosen, here that should be relative, that should be having a further one child before first and it should she should be mentally and physically both in the healthy condition. Then only this method is used. It is not applicable. It is not used by every one. There are criteria and the rules for this surrogacy system. Next is the sperm bank or the semen bank. There are various problems in the sperm productions as mentioned in the above that the men are having the they are if they are infertile or the sperms are not normal or their speed is less or the number of sperms are less that time this option can be used 
so as to have the children in case of such couples a new concept that is the sperm bank has been introduced in this is just like a blood bank here the semen ejaculated by the desired man is collected and after there through physical and medical checkup they are stored up in the sperm bank here the donor's identity is kept secret and he should also be physically and medically a fit person now we will talk about the twins you must have saw the twins in your surrounding they are just similar we are very it is very difficult for us to identify them now in these twins also there are two types of twins one is the monozygotic twins and the other one is the dizygotic twins first we will see the monozygotic twins what happens in that now in monozygotic twins it will develop from a single zygote it means when the egg is fertilized one of the uh, sperm will fertilize one of the ovum and a single zygote will be formed over here see here the one of the egg and the uh, semen is there it is fertilized here this is the fertilized egg this fertilized egg will be start developing okay and this fertilized egg after the eight days near about after eight days it will start developing into two parts two different embryos will be started developing from this only and when these two independent embryos will be developed they further develop into two different babies over there they are having the identical chromosomes and the genes also it means both may be the boys both may be the girls and their chromosomal chromosomal structure will be same only over there but they are just developing from the mono means single zygote that's why these type of twins are called as a monozygotic twins but there is a drawback also there is possibility of drawback also that if anything can be possible and then the formation of two twins they can be conjoined also Conjoint means there are possibilities that one of the organ will be common in both the twins over there. The next one is the dizygotic twins. In the dizygotic twins, the woman may release two ovums at a time from the ovaries over there. So in the figure you can see here the two eggs are released from the ovaries over there. And these two eggs are just fertilized by the two different semen over there so when these two different different semen sperm will come and fertilize these two then these will become two different eggs over there this fertilized embryo will be implanted in the womb of a mother or a woman and they will be implanted separately in the same womb only there now here you can see that the two different babies they are growing over here and the two different placenta has created for these two babies the placenta we have learned that the placenta is just giving the nutrition to the growing babies in the womb these two babies they will maybe gen according to the gender they can be same also or they can be different also but genetically they will be totally different because two different embryos has formed so two different genetic combination took place so there the identical twins may be there they can be they are they will be having different different genetic combination our next topic is health health includes the physical mental and social strongness over there along with this the reproductive health should be good in our country there is a lack of reproductive health education why because of the some reasons that is social customs traditions illiteracy or maybe the shyness because of that we didn't get the proper information regarding the reproductive health occurrence of the menstrual cycle is related with the reproductive health and overall health of a woman nowadays women are also working as par with the men due to this they have to stay outdoor for many hours or whole day so that time if bleeding or the menstrual cycle occurs that time the organs has to be clean they have to be kept clean hygiene has to be taken 
care otherwise problems may occur in the reproductive system these problems occurs both in men and women both here the picture you can see of the two diseases is the syphilis and the gonorrhea it can take place both in the men and women together these diseases are occur due to the bacteria they are caused by the bacteria in both the diseases there are the occurrence of the patches on various parts of your body can take place maybe in the genitals rash may occur on your body fever may be have fever may come and inflammation in the joints that is a paining type structure and then alopecia that is called as a baldness it means loss of hair these are the symptoms of the syphilis now painful burning uh, sensation during the urination oozing of the pus through the penis and the vagina inflammation of the urinary tract anus throat eyes etc are the symptoms of the gonorrhea reproductive health knowledge is also important for the population explosion excessive population growth will give a rise to the unemployment and a great stress on the natural resources so ultimate solution of this is the population control and for the population control family planning should be done and for that the reproduction should be understood first then only this family planning program can be uh, uh, used by the people hope you have understood the lesson now the assignment time read the lesson carefully and solve the exercise given below the chapter stay home and stay safe